Hello and welcome to this video. Uh, we are going to learn about the linear scale factor, area scale factor, and volume scale factor. So in the last video, uh, we learned how to calculate the volume of a frustum, and I promised in that video to create another video where I would teach you or we would learn how to, or the relationship between the linear scale factor area scale factor and volume scale factor so that is going what we are going to do for this video uh, but if you never happened to watch the video about the volume of a frustum of a cone i'm going to leave a link to it in the description box so that you can get to learn about the volume of a frustum so let's uh, get to a lesson of today so Let's say we have a rectangle. Let's say we have a rectangle measuring 8 centimeters by 3 centimeters. Okay? Now, now, let's find the area of this rectangle. So the area is 8 times 3 which is uh, 24 square centimeters. Now, let's multiply each of these sides of this rectangle by 2. Okay? So we are going to have another larger rectangle measuring 16 centimeters and 6 centimeters. So we have multiplied each of the sides by 2. Now, let's also find the area of this rectangle. So, 16 times 6. 16 times 6 is 96 square centimeters. Now, finally, let's have, let's multiply these sides by 3. So, we're going to have another rectangle that way. Measuring, so 8 times 3 is 24 centimeters, and then uh, 3 times 3 is 9 centimeters. So let's find the area of this rectangle also. So 24 times 9, it's 216 square centimeters. So now, so what is happening? What is happening here? So for the first rectangle, we multiplied the lengths by two. Okay. And we got 16 centimeters by uh, six centimeters. What about the area? The area was 24 centimeters. And after we multiplied the lengths by two, the area became 96 square centimeters. So what is the, so that means the area was multiplied by 4 because 24 times 4 is 96. So when the lengths were multiplied by 2, the area also multiplied by 4. Now, what about this other one? We multiplied the lengths by 3. 8 times 3 and 3 times 3. What about the area? 24, it was 24 centimeters and now it's 216 square centimeters. So that means, in other words, the area was multiplied by 9. So do you see a relationship there? So, uh, when we multiplied the lengths by 2, so let me have this, the linear scale factor and area scale factor. So when we are multiplying the lengths by 3, uh, in other words, we are enlarging this rectangle by a scale factor of 3. So in this case, uh, okay, let's start, let's start with the first one, that is 2. So we multiplied the lengths by 2. So 2 is the scale factor. In other words, we are enlarging 
this rectangle by 2. What about the area? The area was 24 centimeters and now it is 96 centimeters. So this area was enlarged by 4. Okay? Or it was multiplied 4 times. So the area is 4. Or the area scale factor is 4. What about this other one? The lengths were multiplied by 3. Or the rectangle was enlarged by a factor of 3. So that is the linear scale factor. What about the area? The area initially was 24 square centimeters and now it's 216 square centimeters. So the area was multiplied by 9. So in other words, the area scale factor is 9. So when the linear scale factor is 3, the area scale factor is 9. So can we see a trend here? This trend is that if we multiply if we multiply the lengths if we multiply the lengths by let's say uh, k okay the area is being multiplied multiplied by k squared okay let's go back here when the lengths were multiplied by 2 the area was multiplied by 4 when uh, the lengths were multiplied by 3 the area was multiplied by 9 so in other words the linear scale factor is equal to the square of, or, or rather, the area scale factor, okay, let, let me write it down here, the area scale factor is equal to the linear scale factor squared, okay? Now, let's have another example. Let's say we have a cuboid. A cuboid that way so it's not that perfect so let's say let's say oh, it's not it's not that good let me do something okay okay let's have it that way so that's a cuboid so let's say this cuboid measures are uh, 3 centimeters by 5 centimeters by 6 centimeters. So, let's decide or let's enlarge this a uh, cube by a factor of 3. So, let's multiply the lengths by 3. Okay? So, we're going to have We're going to have, so 3 by 3 is going to be 9. 5 by 3 is going to be 15 centimeters. And 6 times 3 is going to be uh, 18 centimeters. So, let's find the volume of each of them. Let's find the volume of this one. So, volume of a cube of, or a cuboid is going to be 3 by 5 by 6. So that is going to be 90 cubic centimeters. What about this other one? 9 times 15 times 18. That is going to be, it's going to be, the volume of this one is going to be 2430 cubic centimeters. Okay. Let's also look at another cube, cuboid. Let's say we have another cuboid and we decide to enlarge this cuboid by a factor of 5. Let's say 5. Let we multiply each of the sides by 5 or we enlarge it by a scale factor of 5. So 6 by 5 is going to be 30 centimeters 
5 by 5 is going to be 25 centimeters and 3 by 5 is going to be 15 centimeters. Let's find the volume of that cube, cuboid. So it's going to be 15 times 25 times 30 is going to be 11,250 square uh, cubic centimeters. Now, let's see what is happening. Now, for this case, it was three, or the initial one was 3 by 5 by 6. We multiplied these lengths by, by 3, or rather we enlarged this cuboid by a scale factor of 3. So, uh, initially, the volume was 90 cubic centimeters. And after we enlarged it by 3, the volume became 2,430. So when we multiplied the lengths by 3, the volume became 2,430. So let's see how many times was this volume multiplied to become this volume. So it's going to be 2430 divided by 90. So that's 27. So let me, let me write it down here. So we have linear scale factor and volume scale factor. So we call it volume scale factor. Now, when the linear scale factor or when this cube, the dimensions of this cube were multiplied by 3, the volume was multiplied by 27. Okay? So it was 90 and then it became 2430. So it was multiplied by 27. Now let's come back here. When the same cube, that is this initial one, was, was enlarged by a factor of 5, that is its dimensions were multiplied by 5, and they became 15 centimeters, 25 centimeters, and 30 centimeters, its volume became now 11,250 centimeters uh, uh, cubed. So, what happened to the volume? Initially, it was 90 cubic centimeters, and now it is 11,250 cubic centimeters. So, 90 centimeters cubed was multiplied by how many times to become 11,250? So we can divide 11,250 11, by 90. It is 125 times. So when the linear scale factor was 5, the volume scale factor became 125, or the volume was multiplied or was enlarged 125 times. Now, can we see any relationship here? When the linear scale factor is 3, the volume scale factor is 27. What is the relationship between 3 and 27? 27 is the cube of 3. Okay, what about 5? When the linear scale factor is 5, the volume scale factor is 125. What is the relationship between 5 and 25? Uh, 125 is the, is the cube of 5. And therefore, we can come up with, uh, with, with an equation or a, a relationship there. That when, let me see what we had written here. Or, or if we multiply, yes. Okay, let me, let me write. If, if we multiply the lengths by a value k, okay, the volume is multiplied by k cubed. We have seen that. So I want us now to now get the relationship between these three. The area scale, the linear scale factor, area scale factor, and volume scale factor. So let me go back to the top here. We said that area scale factor is the 
square of the linear scale factor. What about the volume scale factor? The linear scale factor, or rather, the volume scale factor, okay, sorry, volume scale factor is equal to the cube of the linear scale factor, okay, the cube of the linear scale factor. And that is the relationship between the linear scale factor and the volume scale factor. What about the linear scale factor and uh, and and the the area scale factor? So area scale factor we said is equal to the linear scale factor squared. So that is the relationship between the three. That is the linear scale factor, area scale factor, and the volume scale factor. So what we are going to do is that I'm going to leave this video at that for now, and then I'm going to take a glass of water and come back, and we shall be doing some examples on this. We're going to look at questions that involve the knowledge of the relationship between linear scale factor, area scale factor, and volume scale factor. So let's meet in the next video.